Andrew, thank you very much. You should know that uh, in the book that we've just published that Keith wrote, we were going to have each of the trustees write a chapter, but half of them, myself included, can't write. <laughs> I delegated all of this uh, to Keith. Who, by the way, a number of people said tonight, I didn't know you'd owned a coat and tie. <laughs> Jane touched up pretty good tonight. The, um, it's also interesting, which I didn't mention, um, Susan Pollock, where are you, Susan? Susan? There she is. Years ago, back in 1908, which I mentioned earlier, Susan's great-grandfather, her grandfather, was out on Bantam Lake. He was a lawyer, and he was Elaine uh, White's lawyer. And uh, he was out on Bantam Lake, and Elaine White allowed us out as it was because it's great to really preserve everything that you have. And that's how the foundation was really started. That was the germ. And he was very unpopular, Elaine White, in May at that time for many reasons, because almost everything around here was farmland. And people accused him of taking farmland, which was productive, and ruining it by letting trees grow, by trying to preserve it. So he didn't start up with kudos from absolutely everybody. Um, and as a couple of people, as, as, um, as Honor said tonight, Andrew, and as I said earlier, what a vision to be able to overcome these things and to offer us so much. <clears throat> By the way, when you were talking about the 50th anniversary and the 25th and all, as part of the 50th uh, anniversary celebration of the White Memorial Foundation, mm -hmm. Back in 1963, the foundation president, Mitchell Van Winkle, announced the establishment of the White Memorial Foundation Conservation Award. The purpose of this award is to commemorate the spirit which animated Elaine White and his sister May. The White Memorial Foundation Conservation Award is presented from time to time that the trustees may see fit to that person or that organization which in their opinion has performed an outstanding service to conservation in the state of Connecticut. It is the hope of the trustees that over the years the White Memorial Foundation Conservation Award will give public recognition to outstanding merit and also draw the attention of the people to, of Connecticut to their rich natural heritage and in many, way, in many ways often modest in which they really can continue to preserve this great heritage. Since that first time, the award has been given to a total of 44 individuals and organizations. The award is a bond rendering of a beaver, the white memorial symbol, which was designed by our local artist who, I don't know if she's turning 94 or 95 exactly, but Peggy Reventlow. Through all award recipients, Though all award recipients have contributed greatly to conservation, we found it important, particularly this year, to look to someone who had had an almost, almost unmeasurable impact. And it turns out we really didn't have to look very far. The recipient of the 100th Anniversary Award is an individual who has worked at White Memorial since 1977, serving in every capacity possible at the Conservation Center from naturalist to museum director and now education director. In those positions, he has taught tens of thousands of children as well as adults. And I'm giving up much of his time to devote to this and recognizing our place in this environment. He has also been here long enough to be teaching the children of some of his earlier students. <laughs> his ability to take, doesn't look that old though. <laughs> His ability to take complex subjects and relate them to any age group is really nothing but amazing. His talent and, ed and dedication has also been recognized by other organizations. In 1998, he was the recipient of the Garden Club of America's Award for Outstanding Contribution to the Environmental Education of Youth, and in 2001, he received the Litchfield County Conservation District Conservation Education Award the purpose of this last award for outstanding dedication and service, leading children and adults to discover, appreciate, and conserve our natural world. 
This pretty much sums up his legacy, and what a great legacy. I am happy to announce and present to the recipient of the 100th Anniversary White Memorial Foundation Conservation Award, Jeffrey Greenwood. Jeff. Thank you, this is all very overwhelming. <laughs> but I was thinking at what ends a person had to go to get their uh, children to come home from uh, <laughs> Idaho and, and Montana to uh, get their things cleaned out of the attic. <laughs> At any rate, I, I wasn't going to say much tonight, and now the pressure's really on. Uh, and I started to put some thoughts down. Uh, but I thought, you know, if I took uh, my speed reading lessons from Jerry Griswold, this might not take too long. <laughs> For me, White Memorial has turned out to be the culmination of a life's work. And I could not really have predicted that it would turn out this way. It began with a child who had spent consumed with the outdoors in the hills of uh, Berkshire County up in Massachusetts. I had boundless opportunities to explore and to recreate and to learn and to play, all the while almost unknowingly building a foundation and deep stewardship of the environment, an understanding of the local ecology and the natural history, and a wider sense of the value of conservation. After college, I was hired to teach biology at Rumsey Hall School in Washington, Connecticut, where I was able to continue my ramblings over the landscape. My wife knows well about that. <laughs> and share my fascination with nature with students via an after-school outing club. Also, in attempting to conserve natural resources at the school circa 1972, we started a classroom recycling, a paper recycling program. It was a very early. Uh, to do that sort of thing. I found White Memorial one day while accompanying a group of outing club students on a field trip. We watched as Al Abitabli installed bees in the museum's honeybee observation hive. I asked Gordon Laurie, the museum director at the time, about summer help and spent the next three summers assisting him with the Natural History Day Camp program. Following a four-year science teaching experience in Colorado, I found myself back in Litchfield with my young and growing family. It would not have turned out this way were it not for Gordon, who encouraged me to apply for the position of naturalist just vacated by the retiring Bob Danskin. The center in those days was called the Litchfield Nature Center and Museum. Soon it would be renamed White Memorial Conservation Center, accentuating the close connection with its creator, the White Memorial Foundation. During those years, I learned all about Elaine and Mae White and their comprehensive vision of conservation, both here in Litchfield and Morris, with the establishment of White Memorial, and statewide with their gifts of thousands of acres to the state to develop the state park system, as has already been mentioned. It was a fascinating story and a legacy that I'm still learning about. A great respect and honoring of the Whites grew in me as time went by. Gordon and Mitchell Van Winkle Jr. encouraged the Board of Trustees back in 1963 or 4 to create a trailside museum to provide a definitive educational tool for the public. Building on that concept, three different museum renovations followed during my time here, each addressing ways to make our interpretive facility more effective in its message of understanding and conserving the natural environment. The last one completed in 1998 was colossal <laughs> <laughs> and brought the museum to an entirely new level, which since has been referenced during renovations at other Connecticut nature centers. Mr. and Ms. White, I think, would be proud of how their vision has grown of how White Memorial is a beacon of conservation for people far and wide. Thanks are due to them for laying the groundwork for an institution that today provides so many for so many, so much for so many. 
No, I'm not doing so well, Jerry. <laughs> You're hired anyway. Yeah. Right. I became deeply involved in this work, carried along by the spirit of these two exceptional and remarkable people. So tonight I am humbled and honored by this award. I thank the board and my co-workers for their support and encouragement through the years. I also thank my wife Zoe for partnering with me and lending, lending her support to our conservation-oriented lifestyle. For my mother, for my father, for allowing me the endless opportunities to interface with the outdoors as a child, and for my children, for seeming to enjoy the ride. <laughs> At the end of the day, I was just doing the work that needed to be done, guided by the visionaries of a century ago. It's funny, I always thought of myself as an educator, not a conservationist, but I guess the two are really uh, going hand in hand. I've done my best over the years to promote the message of conservation, sharing knowledge and appreciation of the natural world with young and old alike. Next month will mark 36 years with White Memorial. It has been a great and stimulating journey. Receiving this award on the 100th anniversary of the foundation is truly the icing on the cake, and I thank you. Jeff, congratulations. Uh, once more, you know, tonight, I don't know if my wife has to worry or not, but I had several people come up, Tara, you may have to worry about this, and say, congratulations on your 100th. <laughs> <laughs> I took that very personally. <laughs> Earlier tonight when I was coming in, the former first selectman of Morris, Mr. Skilton, is sitting over here, he and his wife looked at me and they said, you know, life here would not be the same without the White Memorial. And I think as you drive along the roads, as you enjoy the trails, uh, as the kids and grandchildren enjoy the museum and everything, that's a very, very true statement. Let me read you a letter I received just today from Carol Plunkett, uh, whose husband Bill is a member of the Board of Trustees here. She's down in the Carolinas recovering. And uh, Bill called me today and said that uh, they've gotten a pretty good report on her, and I'm delighted. Dear Arthur, wishing you a wonderful 100th anniversary celebration of the White Memorial Foundation. As you know, the White Memorial has meant so much to our family for five generations. It has meant so much to our family for five generations. We do so regret not being able to join in the joy on Saturday evening, and it's a bit ironic that I'm recuperating right near Elaine White's other residence in South Carolina. <laughs> we are anxious to return and see everyone in Litchfield. I think that really says a lot about the number of generations, the number of people who we have really been able to affect their lives and enjoy right now. And as Andrew said, looking ahead to the next hundred years, I'm sure we'll be here, I'm sure we'll continue to serve and do great things, not only for the community, but also for the state. And I want to thank everybody tonight for turning out. And I hope you enjoy your dinner, and I hope the people who ordered the chicken get the chicken. I hope the people who ordered the salmon get the salmon, and I hope the people who ordered the beef get the beef. <laughs> very, very